Treating women as second-class citizens is a bad tradition. It holds you back. There's no excuse for sexual assault or domestic violence. There's no reason that young girls should suffer genital mutilation. There's no place in civilized society for the early or forced marriage of children. These traditions may date back centuries. They have no place in the 21st century. I like to be a cardiologist when I grow up. I like to be a doctor. My name is Vicky. I want to be a cardiologist. I'd like to be a pediatrician when I grow up. My name is Yvonne. I want to be a nurse. I am the fifth born in our home and uh, my father, like everybody else, could not think of putting my sisters to school. So it is not an important issue that the girls be, be educated. So generally they don't want, they wouldn't want, and usually they are guided by this. If there's a boy who is in a high school and, they, they, and a girl, they would rather that let us not pay the fees for the girl, let us concentrate on this boy. If he gets married and probably becomes pregnant, what benefit? You spend money to educate somebody who will go away. The role of the Kenyan Women Society is uh, to ensure that uh, the children are brought up well. We pay a lot of dowry. The men feel that they have, it's, it's as if they have bought, bought them. And in the process, the women just have to carry all the chores. The men traditionally used to say that we used to go for, for, for uh, security, but there's no security now, the government has taken over. But they just go and lie down under a tree, and the women go to bring the water, they are taking care of the child, they go and bring, they go and, uh, bring firewood, and they cook the food. <laughs> Women are taken as if they are the second rate people. In fact, you can go to a home and even the women themselves, you ask somebody, who is in this home? They say, there's nobody. Because they think that the only person who is anybody is a, is a man. Nobody gives them a lot of respect. They even treat them like children. So they are treated as in the lower category of the people. They are there just to, but they don't own anything. They're just there.
those are the reasons why we got married to different uh, wives. I was trying to expand the family to have more than one boy. And eventually I am blessed with three boys. Those are reasons. Don't be afraid why these Africans like having a lot of women. No, it is not because of leisure. It is not because of why and, and now, but, but the reasons why is what I told you. It is because of having uh, sons instead of having uh, girls. We in Africa also believe that girls are going. One, one time somebody can come and get married to you, you quit. I don't know where you'll go, but you'll not be in my place. Another thing which I want to tell you, my daughters, is that uh, we believe to, to live long when you have more than one wife. When you have one wife, you might die immediately because of reasons. <laughs> and I tell you the reasons. Stress. Yeah. Stress is very, very high. You might get married to a, to a woman who is not uh, mentally fit and she can frustrate you day after day. And you know when you're frustrated, these are going down. But we believe to have two wives because they might not be the same. Another one might be good, another one being bad. So you'll be having ample time of going there, relaxing and coming back. So we believe to have long life with more than one wife. Our sons also are not good. You, you, might, uh, you might have three sons or four, but they are not good. Maybe their mother can tell them oh, your father is not good and they might go on that way. But having two wives, maybe if, if, if another boy from another family will be bad, maybe another boy from this woman might be good. We believe in Africa without a boy. Without a boy, you will be forgotten. Yes, uh, it is going on. Most of the women, uh, some of the women quietly like the idea, probably because of the pressure, the pressure of the men uh, not wanting to marry women who are not circumcised. But now what they do is that they do have a small ceremony, pretend that they are just having a little fun, but quietly the, the circumciser is doing the job behind the doors. And it is still going on up to today. Usually now, once the mother has gone through FGM, it will feel that it is a rite of passage and consequently, therefore, such a girl is marriageable. And immediately the father organizes with, a, with somebody to marry off and he gets his cows. Many children drop off from class 5, class 6 and they get married. So don't, not so many of them finish even primary. And as I was uh, in, an, in an incident where a woman, because she did not go for uh, circumcision or FGM, when she was delivering the, 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 the midwives from the community, who refused to come to, to, to help, I better just agree so that I can just be served by any woman in the community. I have three girls and there's none of them even thinking about it. When I talk about women's rights, I want to see the problems women go through, especially female genital mutilation. I feel the rights of women are violated when their genitals are uh, cut for no apparent reason. They lose their uh, desire for sex. They lose their body integrity. They, they suffer a lot when they are giving birth. We lose a lot of women. Uh, when they are giving birth, they die. We lose a lot of children during birth because 
of the narrow path uh, canal that the women have arising from female genital mutilation. When a girl is circumcised, she is supposed to get married immediately, even if she is nine years old. But things are changing. Uh, girls are now going to school and uh, we, they are beginning to see the importance. The awareness is coming up, people are getting uh, exposed and uh, we are going towards uh, the women's rights even if uh, the older group will, will, will shine away. Women empowerment is about uh, giving women uh, the capacity to work on them, uh, for themselves and earn a living for themselves. So that is what I'm doing uh, as a member of parliament. We make laws in parliament that can protect the body integrity of women, that can protect the women from female genital mutilation, that can protect the girls from being circumcised, that can protect the girls from dropping out of school as a result of uh, genital uh, mutilation. And uh, I'm seeing a change. So more girls are going to school, more girls are remaining in school, and a few girls are dropping out of school to get married. And that is how I'm trying to empower the women as much as possible. In a small way, in a big way, my dream is to have women empowered. Uh, my dream is to have women have their rights not uh, tampered with by anybody.